You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. Well, you watched it right here live on Como, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump coming face to face for the first time. Tonight's presidential debate may be the last time both candidates get a national audience before the November election. The 90-minute debate covered a wide range of topics, including the economy, abortion, immigration, and the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Como political analyst Ron Dotsauer joins us now. Ron, before we play a few clips, we want to know what your takeaway was from tonight's presidential debate. You know, it's always difficult watching a debate. They usually, you know, it's, it's usually kind of murky about who wins. Um, and I thought she set the tone tonight when she walked across the stage to go over and shake his hand. Most people were betting that wasn't even going to be a part of the conversation, so to speak. But I felt like two things that she did well tonight. One, she looked and sounded very presidential, which was a metric she had to meet. Number two, which surprised me the most, I think, of this whole 90 minutes, I didn't think she could get under his skin because I thought he'd been coached out of that. Pretty clearly, she got under his skin to the point where he's talking about people eating dogs and cats and, and how, um, let me tell you a secret, President Biden hates you and the kinds of stuff that just sort of emotional, visceral reaction, which tells me she kind of got underneath his skin a little bit. So, you know... Um, so, I, again, at the end of the day, how much does it all matter? It's still going to be a very close race. It's going to be one or two point race in five to seven states. But my takeaway from this evening is that she won this debate tonight. But will it matter at the end of the day? We'll have to wait and see. All right. Let's look at some of the individual topics. They addressed many. Immigration is one of them. Let's take a listen. That bill would have put more resources to allow us to prosecute transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. But you know what happened to that bill? Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you know why? Because he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And understand, this comes at a time where the people of our country actually need a leader who engages in solutions, who actually addresses the problems at hand. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Okay, Ron, going into this debate, you said immigration, border security yes. is a huge topic, especially yes. for voters in the swing states. Yes. How did they do? Well, um, I thought she did a pretty decent job when she said, look, he killed the legislation that could solved a lot of these problems. And he went back to his tried and true statement of, look, here's the problems we're having now. I think he got a little carried away and he got a little over the top in his defense about, again, back to the dogs and cats comments. And, and the, as you saw from the, one of the anchors, they said, look, we just talked to the city manager. That just hasn't happened in Springfield. So, you know, again, she was pretty effective of rallying him up. And you could see the facial expressions. His jaws got taut. And he looked like he was a little angry through a big portion of that debate on a lot of these issues on even immigration, which he thinks is, is one of his sweet spots, and it kind of is. Um, but she did a preemptive strike on that issue a little bit that I think was fairly effective. Let's get to another clip tonight. Uh, January 6th, of course, came up. Uh, this is what both candidates had to say. Let's listen in. You were watching it unfold on television. It's a very simple question as we move forward toward another election. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? Yes, sir. I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. I showed up for a speech. I said, I think it's going to be big. I went to Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C., and the mayor put it back in writing, as you know. I said, you know, this is going to be a very big rally or whatever you want to call it. And again, it wasn't done by me. It was done by others. I was there. And on that day, the president of the United States incited a violent mob to attack 
our nation's capital, to desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured, and some died. And understand, the former president has been indicted and impeached for exactly that reason. Your reaction to that? I mean, I know there's a lot to unpack there, but how do you think both candidates handled that when it came to the attack on the Capitol? Well, my, my general view is that January 6th is, was, a, was a dark day in American history. Um, to have our, our house actually under siege. Now, there's always this, he said, she said, mm -hmm. finger pointing going on. I was invited there to speak. No, but you didn't react to it the way you should if you were president. He's going to blame Nancy Pelosi. She's going to blame him. You know, I don't know that anybody scored any major points on that, but I think that most of what the American public thinks about that issue is they do lay at rest his feet around the management and handling of that issue because at the end of the day, he was the president of the United States. So, again, she got him on the defensive again. That seemed to be, you know, you got to decide whether you're going to be on your toes leaning forward or on your heels leaning back. He spent a lot of this 90 minutes kind of leaning back on his heels because she was pushing him around a, a, a bit. That said, going into the debate, all of the polls, I mean, it showed them neck and neck yes. within a point or two. Yes. Do you think tonight's debate changed that in the least? You know, there were times when everybody thought that Hillary Clinton had beaten him in, in, a, in that 2016 debate, and you saw what happened there, right? So you, know, you got to be careful you don't read too much into wins and even loses a debate at the end of the day. Is the race still going to be close? Yes. Is it going to be close in five or six states? Yes. Um, did he help himself tonight? No. Did she help herself a little bit tonight? Yes. Will it matter? To be determined. Um, but it's going to be a close race. And now who's going to run in the next 53 to 54 days? Who's going to run the best campaign? I don't think you'll see him side by side again. Although maybe he, he may now be asking for another debate. We'll see. Come on, political analyst Ron Dotsover. Thanks for being with us. We you appreciate betcha. it.